Hello, my friend. Welcome to Tammy Anderson Art. Today, I'm going to show you how I took this piece of art I bought at Hobby Lobby and transformed it into this beautiful, magical mermaid tail. So stay tuned. That's coming up next. Hello, lovey-dovey. Welcome to another video. So we're starting this one off. I have already spray painted the piece outside with just some black flat spray paint. Today we're going to be playing around with all different types of colors and some interference pigments, which are always a blast. So the colors I'm using are a combination of primary elements, some tube paints, and as I mentioned, all five interference colors from Color Art. In the description, you will find a full recipe and a video on how I mix my paints, but here's a quick preview. I use this Ovation Sherwin Williams brand Base C mixed with Joe Sonia varnish. I make my black cell activator using Australian Floetrol and carbon black acrylic paint from Golden. I have all five interference colors mixed up here and you can see what they look like now. What these interference colors will do is add colors into my painting that I'm not using. For example, there's red. I also have violet, green, blue, and gold. So when the piece shifts around, you're going to see all of those colors highlighting in the painting. So I'm just showing you a few of the colors I have there mixed up from the primary element line. I'll list all those colors and the names in the description below. So I'm starting off with a Posca marker and just making a general outline to where the waves are because I couldn't see where they were after I spray painted them. Now I'm going to take my solid colors, all of the colors I have except for my interference colors, and I'm going to lay them all down on the tail portion of this piece. I'm going to avoid the wave area because we're going to do something special with that and also the cute little starfish that is protruding from the piece. These colors are acting almost as my pillow paint or my base paint, something for the interference colors to easily move along when I do my swipe eventually. So I'm, again, just using these, putting them all down, and I'm going to blow them around with my blow dryer. This way I'll have a nice marbled base to work on top of. So I turn my blow dryer on low and just blend the colors together. I just want a thin coat of paint to be left on the surface of the tail. In all honesty, once I was done blowing this out, it was already beautiful, <laughs> but I, I had a different vision and I was determined to obtain that. When it comes to moving your color, you just want to take your time with it. There's no rush. The paint's not going to dry right away on you. Just look at the way the, the colors are moving and kind of go with the flow, literally. Example, the upper tip here. I'm not going to blow downwards because the paints are going up towards it. When it came to the wave area, I wanted to try to keep that paint out of that area as much as possible. So I blew it around a little bit, but when the area was really tight, I brought out the Great Blodini, my favorite little airbrush. 
That little guy has saved me many, many times. He's in my Amazon shop if you're interested. Very easy to use. You just plug it in and go. There's no airbrush knowledge necessary to use this. So I just blended those little areas around and then I started to put down the interference colors on top of the entire area that I had put paint down already. Again, I'm avoiding the wave area because we will be doing something special with that. There is no rhyme or reason to putting these colors down. You can drizzle in a little bit like this to get a slight shifting effect, or you can go full on and just cover the entire thing like I did. I wanted this to really, really shift a lot when it was done. Essentially, the more you add, the more you're going to see. And it doesn't matter what color you lay down first, they're all going to blend together in the end. So once I got done putting down all of these interference colors, I came back in again with the blow dryer and just blended them together so they would mix. However, I realized I forgot one of my greens when I was putting the first set of initial colors down. So I just added that in here. Once I'm done blending these colors with the air, I'm going to come back in with my palette knife, some paper, and some cell activator to create the scaly look that a mermaid tail would have if mermaids were real. Do any of you believe mermaids are real? I have friends that do. And you know, in the world we live in today, it wouldn't shock me. <laughs> so now it's time to swipe in those beautiful scales. And this is where you're really going to see those interference colors do their job. Now, I will say that it's hard to see on camera. So you just kind of got to stick to the end here. The colors... And the fact that the paint was dripping down below, they all kind of made it, I don't know, very hard to see this video, but it, it is a gorgeous, gorgeous piece as you saw in the beginning there. And I'm over the moon happy about it. So what I'm going to do is let you watch this part of the video where I'm just swiping and I will be back. Before I do that, though, I want to let you know there are brand new interference colors out that I will be debuting on this channel Friday, so be on the lookout for those. They are the Diamond Sparkle version, and they are bananas. So, if you're interested in seeing them now, head to colorart.com, but I will be showing you the new set Friday.
All right, so here is a wet close-up so you can see what's going on here. I love the movement, the colors, just all of it. I was so overly pleased with this piece. So now what I need to do is let it dry and then come back for the next step. But first, it wouldn't be a Tammy interference video without a little bit of flash. So let me show you these beautiful colors. So you see how you're seeing gold and red and violet, greens, blues. Those are from the interferences. Of course, some of the blue and green is from the blue and green colors I used. But if you see a, a soft baby blue, that is the blue interference. So these, again, I like to show these with the flash because this is what it will look like once you varnish a resin. So I let it sit for about a week and now it's completely dry and time to start working on the wave area, the starfish area, and all the little things I want to do to it. So everything dried beautifully, uh, no cracking, everything pretty much stayed the way it was and I'm very happy. So now as for the starfish and the wave area where the paint spilled over, I'm just going to use a black Posca marker and clean that up. And we're going to be doing some art on it anyway. It's time to wow it up. So again, I'm just using that Posca marker to clean it up in some areas. And then what I'm going to do is pull out some glitter and some uh, glitter glass and have some fun with this. I'm going to explain all the products in a minute and then uh, we'll get going on this. The first thing I want to do though, before I do anything to that wave area, now that it's all black again, is I want to add some of this snow texture. This is a paste you can buy at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. Just a little bit on the tips of the wave and the tips of the starfish to make it look like a little bit of sea foam. I do want to mention I am currently investigating to see if we can get these shapes made with a, an attached frame like I have here. If that is possible, you will hear from me soon about it. So this is just a primary element I had mixed up with the... Uh, house paint base and Joe Sonia and I'm just painting the tips of the waves there a light aqua green color and then I'm also going to paint the entire area of the waves that color you're not going to see it now because it's on black but once the resin gets on and I do the close-up you'll be able to see it so these glitters I'm about to use come from artiststilldeath.com I do talk about that shop in a minute here but I wanted to tell you that's where I got these from they are so pretty they are chameleon like these are chameleon flakes almost imagine taking a unicorn horn and grinding it up that's what's in that little jar there pure magic so I took some clear glue a little bit of both of those products mixed them together and very lightly painted it on the wave area and let it dry. This way, when there's clear resin in that area, you're going to see some of that poking through the background. Next, I took a paintbrush and a little bit of... Uh, white ink from the Posca marker and just kind of blended it around the inner edges of the waves there just to make them stand out a little bit more. I took a little bit of that primary element color and went over it 
so it would be the same color as the tips of the weights. Now let's talk about the products I'll be using. So I am loving this. The next step, however, is going to be adding either your top coat, your uh, spray varnish, or in my case, resin. I got some beautiful new resin pigments I bought from artiststilldeath.com. They have a full shop of all the best resin art supplies. I love buying from them. So what I have here is a white. This white is a top white, which means if you swipe this white over the top of resin, you'll get white selling or lacing, I should say. There's also a bottom white, and they explain this on the website, where if you put the white down first and then color on top of it and swipe, you'll get lacing and cells, okay? So this is a top white. I'm using that because I wanna put down a whole bunch of clear with a little tiny bit of two uh, colors here that I'll tell you about, and I'm gonna swipe some of this over the top, hopefully get some uh, lacing that looks almost like foamy water, okay? So the two colors I'm gonna use, Green Diamond, from Just Resin, and I'll show you these when they're mixed. And this is Reef Blue Shimmer from Color Obsession. How fun is that? They also, just so you know, have your normal matte, or not matte, non-shimmery colors, like maroon red. Um, but there's tons of different options, purple rain, champagne, and I have a video coming up soon they have, I'm excited about this, all their different wood shapes, full size, um, rounds, squares, uh, rectangles, I believe. Don't quote me on that. They also have these cute little sea life coasters that I'm going to be doing a set of. Now these are not wood. They just have a protective sheet on them, and I'll show you really quick. These are essentially, can be used as no resin coasters too, if you want. Do a design on one side and then flip it over and you have a clear acrylic surface. So each side has a piece of this protective film. You peel one off. This is another great thing about these, why I like to get them. Um, you peel this off. Do your artwork, and then when you're done, peel off the back, and it's perfectly clean, so you don't have to tape, okay? So it's a clear acrylic coaster. So I did a video on this before where you can, like, take your skins and glue them to the bottom and then have this beautiful clear acrylic surface. Don't have to mess around with resin at all if you don't want to, okay? As I said, all different types of shapes. They have... Dragons, butterflies, sea turtles, you name it. But we'll do a video in the future about that. The other thing that they have that I like are the reusable stir sticks. They're made out of that same acrylic. You peel this off both sides, use it, rinse it off if you're an acrylic pour artist. Let the resin cure on it and peel it right off if you're a resin artist. They have all different sizes for like big buckets of mixing. And as I said, the wood shapes. So, oops, sorry, I got um, wolf. <laughs> I had a brain fart for a minute there. A wolf, and I'm looking at this here. This is from me. I put my oily finger on there, so I'm going to have to clean it. Um, this is MDF, though. This is not acrylic. They're really nice, thick pieces, as you can see. Really nice pieces of wood. So, if you need any of those supplies you can go into the description and there's 10 percent off for you guys okay so as i said i am going to mix up some resin we're going to use some of those beautiful pastes that i just showed you and we're going to go for this and finish this off and have it looking magnificent wait till you see these colors with resin on them so when it comes to coloring resin with pigments specifically made for resin like these, you do not need much. Just a little bit on the edge of the stick will cover at least a half cup of resin, or I should say color, not cover. 
So you don't need much. Um, you're going to put them into the cup first before you mix up your resin because resin has a working time and you don't want to waste some of that working time opening jars and putting lids on. So this is KS Liquid Art Ultra UV Resin. You mix it for three minutes. Make sure you clean off your stick well. And um, then once it's incorporated fully, you're going to add a little bit of each color into the cups. Now, I did not need a lot of each color, so I only put about a tablespoon of resin into each cup. And I'm just showing you the beautiful colors here. I absolutely love those colors. They're so metallic looking. So the first thing I did was put down clear resin on the entire piece and coated the entire piece with my hand. I did not touch the frame or inner frame with the resin, just the artwork part. Once I was done doing that, I then came in with the colors I mixed, the three colors, and put a little bit of each color on there. Not a lot. I didn't want to put too much and cover up the whole thing. I wanted to see some of that black poking through. So I put down a little bit and then I took out my heat gun. I was originally going to try to swipe this, but because of the texture on the wave tips, I was afraid that it wouldn't work right. So I just got out the heat gun and blew the colors around. So you just want to use the hot air from the gun and just push the color around and create some movement in your wave area. If you have some color that goes outside of the area that you want it to stay in, what I like to do is add a little bit of clear resin to push the color back. And I'm going to show you that right now that area by the tail, it was getting a little out of control. So I just took some clear resin and drizzled it in there and you can see it pushing back that colored resin. This also creates amazing movement when using this method, like to do a resin ocean or something like that. The waves are just phenomenal when you do this. So the last thing to do is put a big old pinch of my super shard glass glitter on the starfish and we are done Alrighty, my friends this is going to be absolutely phenomenal when i get it into daylight holy cow so first of all the wave area i love i love how that glitter is peeking through from behind get that beautiful texture up on the waves not that you could really see it on film this wave here, I love how the little bit of white is splashing out onto the mermaid tail. Oh, this is just such a fun piece. Just, you know, fantasy, magical, fits into all those realms. Look at the uh, primary elements, prism pore colors doing their job. The cute little starfish I love. And I'll tell you, that swipe pattern definitely looks like scales. So I think that I am very, very happy with this mermaid tail. And I hope you are too. Thinking about doing another one, but with a white pearl look to it. So I did one in black. We'll do white next. And I just absolutely love it. So before I show you this beauty in the natural daylight, I want to go over one thing with you about a special offer that I stumbled onto this month. I ordered some of this super shard uh, glass glitter from Meyer. sorry. <laughs> and typically I use the diamond dust that I talk to you guys about all the time, the little tiny shards of glass. Well, sometimes 
I also use a much bigger type of this stuff and I get it from Meyer Imports, okay? They have, and I'll show you the little pamphlet they sent me when I ordered, they have the most beautiful German glitter glass and some other things, but they're running a special this month, I found out, that with every order that you put in, they're sending out free samples for Glitterama 2022. It is beautiful. I believe this is a champagne colored glitter glass that they send you for free. But I wanted to show you because I used it in today's video. And these flakes add such a strong zap of bling when the light goes over a piece. I absolutely love them. You can see how big those shards are. So these are called super shards. I've been using this company for years. They come in all different colors. Um, you can see the size of the flake a lot better there. So they really add a, a nice sparkle to your piece. But on top of that, they're offering free shipping on orders over 100 And this month for anybody that orders, they're doing a drawing and you can win a free 30-piece set of their glitters. So you can see here all the different blends that they sell. And I'm telling you about this because not a lot of people know about this company. They've been around for years. And they have Micas, uh, Flitters, which is a glitter, but almost paper-ish. It's hard to explain. Little fairies, gnomes. So yeah, check out Meyer Imports if you get a chance and you're looking for some extra special bling okay so i'm going to put the information down below i reached out to them and they are offering my viewers 10 percent off isn't that awesome yes we love discount and they have the glass deco beads those are so cool the little micro beads love it okay so meyer imports information will be in the description below all right, so I have you outside of my little spray paint table. Here we go. Now I still have to do a top coat of resin on it. And um, yeah, nothing else, just that. See all the movement in the waves. One thing I am going to do when I do the top coat is I'm going to fix this little area here. I'm just going to put a little color there in because it just looks like an eye. So, oh, I just love it. I love that that, like I said, that swipe allows you to do something like this, like create a scale like look. Look at that starfish. So my friends, thank you so very much for joining me. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to click the like button on the way out and comment below. I'm going to, as I said, do another one of these, but in a white pearl um, kind of opal look. I think that will look pretty with the blue waves. And just be sure to check out the description for all of the information. I love this little area right here. This little shoop and the texture on the waves. So pretty. But yeah, this will get a top coat of resin and hopefully be off to its new home. This would look great in a house by the shore.
And if anybody wants to donate a house by the shore to me, leave me a message. <laughs> I love you all. I hope you're all having a fantastic day. And happy pouring.